Hey guys, and the end, Spoken Label. The amazing Fee Marshall. Straight over to Fee. It's my time to get some peace and quiet now. Fee's going to do four points for us. Over to you, my friend. Serial Cube. The only time my mum ever let us have pick and mix was at Big Tesco's before we went to the cinema. The Big Tesco's of town is a local day out. You can go to one of the home bargains, but if mum takes your big Tesco's, you both try and blag your way to victory. Con her on mystery crisps, two versus one. The warehouse pipes, gleaming lights, run over your detailed debates about Weetabix. And the massive white cube by the intersection holds a humming child waiting to go home. Yeah. Oh, great stuff. No, I really enjoyed that then. It had that sort of earthiness about in it. I think it's it's a really good piece to start off with that. It gives people a bit of feel to the way you are outside your poetry in normal life. So yeah. was that the intention when you wrote that poem? It was just about big Tesco's burn, like <laughs> <laughs> I know yeah, it. I know I, I, I know which one it is a bit in there before now. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I know it's it, got so. pipes in the ceiling. Yeah, I know it. Yeah, I've been. I don't know to... why. I don't know why it's got pipes in the ceiling. It just does. Oh, it's a strange one, that. Yeah, I've been down to Turf Moor a few times where I've burned the football clubs, and I've been all around Burnley. So yeah. Our house was sort of near there. It got oh, yeah. really loud. God, it would. Yeah, it's not exactly the most quietest football stadium in the world. That one I've ever been to. No. Oh God, you know, it's fantastic, excellent stuff. Okay. Yeah. Back to you, poem number two. Uh, this one's a bit of the sort of, when I said I did some absurd ones, this one's a bit weird. Um, it's called Fighting Chance. Fight a man. Fight a man with a knife. Fight a man with a knife strapped to his nose. Fight a man with swords for teeth. Fight a man with swords for teeth and eyes and arms. Fight a man who is just swords. Fight a man. Fight a man with wings. Fight a man with wings breathing fire. Fight a man who is a decapitated head floating in the sky. Fight a man who decapitates men. Fight a man who causes levitation. Fight a man. Fight a man with a cause. Fight a man without a cause. Fight a man who gives causes. Fight a man with a clause. Fight a man because of course. Fight a man when he set fire to your house last, last year for the insurance. Fight a man by setting fire to his house this year. Fight a man because he's a Tory. Fight a man because he's the man. Fight a man who looks a little like an eagle. Fight that man. Oh, brilliant, brilliant. Now, obviously, with there been the massive repetition on that, I'm going to ask you a question about that in a minute. But this is show you how deaf I am sometimes. I thought you were going to start off a poem about it, say, bite a man then for a second to begin with, but I thought, I thought, well, that's, I thought that's a bit extreme. <laughs> but yeah, I, fight I him. Know. Yeah, but I love it. Yeah, maybe but I yeah. should have. Well, that's but, your sequel no. point. That's your sequel point. Okay, bite a man and then start. Anyway, but well, um, tell us then about because it, when you do a piece like that, they aren't related to it's very, very much a performance piece that straight away. And I loved it. Yeah. But how did you, was it intentional for the repetition in that piece from the beginning or did it just flow over time? Um, I don't know. Sometimes I just sort of, I think that was probably one of the ones I started writing when I was procrastinating my work. Mm. No, no, it's <laughs> like, um, Because sometimes when I just sit down and I'm writing, I think, yeah, because out there, fight a man. And I thought, what can I add to that? What can I take away from that? How can how much can you play with a sentence until it becomes an entirely different thing? It's like a sort of writing exercise that they give you in drama or something, back when I used to do drama. Yeah, it's very, very, very theatrical straight away of it. So yes, I can I could, I would have loved to see you do that on stage because I can full imagine if you get the flow going, you're just running all around the stage. I can see that. Really? Yeah. Fantastic stuff. Anyway, listen, let's move on. Anyway, give yeah. us peace. Over to you with peace number three. Right. 
you're gonna have to bear with me on this one because it's from a slightly different generation to you, no offense. It's called cringe culture. In layman's terms, I am wasting time while the world burns and the fate of humanity rests on my generation. Pretty cringe. Pointing down the road at some adult hobby I should probably get that would benefit society. Spend more time on my homework and less answering what my body is. It's YouTube stuff, okay? That's code for it's this guy who died and no, I'm not over it. Though maybe if I was less cringe, I'd never have been invested anyway. Time to invest in anything else. Though not hexagons, we've not stooped that low. But you'll spend hours in a chat of a guy playing Minecraft. You are what's wrong with this world. I want to chill out. You can't afford to. I bloody well can, I think. Look for a second and tell me it's not for kids. Look at yourself in the mirror and say you're not cringe. Nearly 20 and getting complimented by a 10-year-old on your Tommy in it jumper. That's nice. Why don't you do a jumper? Sounds cringe. No thanks. Probably should actually try and forge human relationships with human people. I like to think that's been going well recently. Update. It hasn't. It's not. They can't flush the embarrassment out of you when we meet people and be saying, hey, my name is and I do sensible shit like laundry. Have you ever wanted to sit inside the washing machine with the Tommy in it jumper? Just spinning around until you become cartoon letters too. I am the Rat King. I eat cartoon letters for breakfast and it jump cuts me to an alternate universe where I have laser eyes and the world is ending. Pretty cringe, but I accept this. Now a rat can do, but keep spinning. Ending there. Oh, that ending. Brilliant, because you're finishing off job by spinning, but in reality the poem just stops. There's yeah. a complete contrast to the movement on it. So is was that is that a more recent piece that one was it? Because it's um I wrote it several months ago. I just it took me a long time to have the confidence to um to read it. Ah oh, no, yeah, you get that piece sometimes where you can read it, write them, and you sat there thinking, Oh god, I'm never gonna be able to perform this if I read it and share it to anybody. Yeah. Some pieces are more easy to do than others are I know great choice of well, I felt because there's a contrast to the previous piece. Because yeah. the whole tone of it is different. And it does very, very good stuff. So excellent. So what made you write that piece? Um a sort of guilty pleasure of mine is watching uh, Minecraft uh YouTubers online. Um and the it <laughs> I'm very aware a lot of kids watch it and it makes me feel a little bit like I'm a waste of space <laughs> sometimes because as a as an adult I should be doing adult things like trying to improve the world and stop wars and um, contribute to society and you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, so it's based off of a an incident in which genuinely an eight-year-old complimented me on my jumper, which oh. made me which made me question my entire life. And it did. Oh wow! <laughs> so, um, yeah, <laughs> just shows made... you really where poems would come from. They come from the most unexpected means sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> brilliant. Yeah. Okay. We had on the point the big finale then now. So yeah. OG you fate for your fourth. This and is final this is piece. one of my favorites I've ever written, by the way. Um it's called <clears throat> sorry, I'm just clearing up. It's called Coral. I read it quite a lot, so um we add us up around the hours it takes to reach into pockets for another minute of energy. I have never had trouble saying that I love you or I would give my life arranged here for you. I do not need to say this. A coral reef is a beautiful place, filled with all the treasure the earth has for us and more. When they call us through, I look at them, 
and see the ghost of a gutted fish fin sinking slow below the surface. The coral reefs are shrinking due to man's effect on the planet. And I look at you. A world wants to contain you. Did you fucking know that? I don't care if neither of us will ever see the coral. I look at man. Not in a hateful way, but you can see the spike curl around my lip and you smile. My beautiful sister. You are beloved more than you will ever believe, and yes, you deserve the world. You deserve a world with coral. Beautiful. That is absolutely beautiful. Again, a really, really nice change in tone in your four pieces there today. The texture yeah. is different in each one. So tell us about where that piece came from, man. Because I know you say it's one of your favourites, isn't it, V? Yeah. So basically there's this there's this lass. Um, she's um I consider to her to be found family, basically. Mm. Um and it's based off of a night we spent in A and E together because of uh, some health concerns she had, and because um, she's quite uh, severely disabled, um, the doctors not treating her right, and me wanting to start a fight, but not because I understood um, I can't do that, and just. It's just about how much I love her and how much better she deserves than a shitty healthcare system, uh, well, an underfunded healthcare system, and people who don't listen to her because of her disabilities. Um, and she's got so much to say and so much to give to the world, and she deserves amazing things, really. She does. Um, and, and that's it. She, nice. I, she, she deserves the world, in my opinion. It's beautiful. And it is, I can get. I got the love on that piece straight away then. And it's a beautiful, beautiful piece. I mean, yeah, I can't blame yeah. you now. Respect it. It gives a really good feel for the person you talk about. That's why when you read, write poems like that sometimes, it's it's not the case of what you said in it, Fee, that's so good, what you didn't say. And you can see there's tenderness. And this is the undying. It's, it's a lovely piece. Absolutely beautiful. You're making this old man feel very sorry now and sad yeah. now. <laughs> no, it's, it's fine. No, that's what. No, but anyway, listen, seriously, that yeah. is beautiful. So thank you again for today, Fee. It's been an absolute pleasure. Yeah. So... No, thanks. It's absolutely all right. White as uh, as my wife said, Amanda. Amanda, my wife's from Bradford originally, so she uses white on me all the time in the drive. They're at yeah, Yorkshire twang, so... Hang around because I do need a quick word off microphone anyway, so I'll take a few minutes. So, but thank you again. It's okay. been a pleasure today. Really have enjoyed this session today. Good luck and good luck for the future as well. So, yep. Anyway, guys and girls, that's it for today from Spoken Label. As Don Callis over at AEW Wrestling says, stay safe and stay over. And we will see you all next.